Hi, I'm Susan Kennedy of Pretty Peaceful, and I'm out on my front porch today. The sun came out. I just wanted to put my face in it for a minute, take a little break from work, and show you my Runa blanket. This is actually an old blanket from 2019, but I'll show you how well it held up over the years here. This is the Runa C2C blanket, and it has been my family's absolute favorite <laughs> blanket, all of us. Uh, we've had it on our couch for three and a half or four years straight now. Um, and someone recently requested a YouTube tutorial for this pattern. So I thought, why not? I'm in the C2C mood lately anyway. <laughs> so I'll give you a little bit of a yarn review of how this yarn has held up uh, for about three and a half years now of being washed and dried and taking it camping and all three of my little boys using this and my husband using it. Me And me too. We've all used it. <laughs> And how the tassels hold up. Everybody's always worried about how tassels are going to wash. And then um, and also in this video, I'll give you some tips and some advice for how to choose your colors for this blanket. And I'm hoping we can crochet along together. It's a very unique construction on this um, C2C blanket. It is six C2C squares that are then joined. And if you want to make a smaller blanket, you can just do four squares. And to join the squares, we leave a long tail whenever we finish with a color, and we use that tail to sew the squares together while we leave in the ends. Double duty. <laughs> so um, this original blanket here I made, and um, I started this design in January 2019. I think I finished it in July, and then it was published in I Like Crochet magazine in um, uh, February of 2020. So it came, came out in January of 2020. Um, so you can find this pattern on ilikecrochet.com um, and you can also find it on ravelry.com. It's one of my more favorite, uh, one of my more popular patterns. Thank you. If you've already purchased this pattern on Ravelry, I appreciate your support. Um, so that's where you can find the pattern and also I'll show you how to make it in a, in a YouTube tutorial here. So the yarn I used for this is Red Heart Huga. It's bulky weight yarn. And Red Heart did supply me with free yarn to make this because it was a commission for I Like Crochet magazine. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, but I, I really am gonna give you my honest review of how it's held up here. Um, I've washed it and dried it at least 10 times now. I think about twice a year, um, if not more. Definitely anytime we come back from camping, I wash it. Um, and sometimes it's been even washed and hot. I did kind of melt it slightly. You can see it felt it a little bit, especially on the back of the border there. But overall, the yarn still looks pretty well. It's, it's lost a little bit of its silkiness. It's not quite as silky as when um, I first started. The tassels felted quite a bit, but overall are looking pretty well, uh, pretty good, I think. Not too many swizzles, it's a little matted, but honestly, we've used this on the daily. Like when my son comes home from school, he <laughs> takes off his shirt, number one. This is a little boy's man, I just, you gotta, gotta love him. And he gets under this blanket in his little favorite armchair and just snuggles up and watches his cartoons. So it's been definitely a comfort item and very well used. And I think he had just turned four when we got this back from the magazine. And so he's at the age where he's poking his toes through it and pulling on the tassels and everything. So some of the tassels have separated a little bit, you know, and I could take the time to sew these back in if I really cared to. Um, but overall, it's held up pretty well. That tassel kind of separated a little bit too. You know, and if you want to avoid that problem in the long term, you know, you could make your tassels removable or just really skip the tassels. But when I finished this blanket, it just looked like a magic carpet to me. And a magic carpet's got to have some funky tassels, right? So the, the pattern tutorial shows you how to make these triple layered two tassels. And I hope, uh, hopefully I'll make a video for these two. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so uh, stay tuned and I'll show you how to get started on picking out your yarn for this blanket. And you'll need about 3,000 yards or uh, 3,168 yards or 2,904 meters if you use bulky weight yarn. I think if you use worsted weight yarn, you'll use a little bit less. Um, so the Red Heart Hugo, that's a bulky weight yarn with, um, is about 70% acrylic, 30% nylon, and it has 132 yards or 121 meters per 141 gram ball. <laughs> so I used three balls of the main color, 
yarn. That's the cloud color here, that light silver color. Three balls of the sage color, aloe. Three balls of the navy, which is indigo. Um, two balls of forest, which is this dark green color. Two balls of the teal color here. Two balls of the brown latte. Two balls of um, rust, that's this kind of orange color. Uh, sorry, three balls of rust. Two balls of this almond color, that's kind of the straw colored yellow, and four balls of the plum candy burgundy color because I used that for the border. So if you're buying bulky weight yarn, two, ball, two to three balls of each color and then four balls of the one you're using for the border. Um, and we'll have nine colors total. Um, that should be plenty. I haven't done the calculations on how much worsted weight yarn we'll need yet. <laughs> so stay tuned for that and I'll fill you in. Um, I know it's hard to shop for yarn and yarn's so expensive these days we want to shop very carefully. So I'll do my best to be accurate on that. But now let's talk colors for this blanket. The Runa blanket requires nine colors. And how do you choose colors that look good together? Or um, just how do you go about choosing colors? So I'll give you some tips of kind of what goes through my, my mind when I'm planning a blanket like this. And I like to start with the very lightest color in the center of the diamond and triangle shapes. So for my Red Heart Hugo yarn, I used uh, the silver one. Um, what is that colorway called? Cloud. And for my worsted white version, I'm going to be using Lily Sugar and Cream cotton yarn. Um, this is 100% cotton, and I'm sticking with the 5mm hook here. This is Lily Sugar and Cream cotton in the soft Ecru colorway. I also really love the Ecru colorway of Sugar and Cream yarn. Uh, and I do tend to avoid the super stark bright white. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I like to go with a little bit of an off-white or an ivory. So this is the main color yarn, and that is um, called MC, written out in the pattern. And if you're doing a bulky weight, you will need uh, 396 yards, or 363 meters. If you're using worsted weight, you will need 274 yards and 215 meters of this color, this kind of bright white contrast. And you'll need three kind of small balls of this color for the color work. So I usually like to wind mine into about this size of balls. So you'll need three of those because at one point <laughs> our main color is used three times within one row. So each of those little sections is worked from its own um, little ball of yarn like this. Next I like to go to the next darkest color on the spectrum. So this is the indigo color, the Red Heart Hugo version here. And for my worsted weight version, I am using Lily Sugar and Cream in black. So that provides a nice contrast here whenever those two colors line up. Um, so you don't have to use black, it could be navy, it could be you know, a really dark brown, but th this will be your um, contrast color two yarn. Uh, and so it was navy in the original pattern, I'm using black here. You'll need 396 yards or 363 meters if you're using bulky weight yarn, or about 341 yards or 312 meters for worsted weight yarn. And you want to roll it into two different balls. And I recommend if you do have cone yarn like I do, don't work from the cone. It really makes it harder. So do yourself a favor and pre-wind a couple little balls here before you start crocheting. <clears throat> and then let's see. After that, after I have my light and dark colors here, I like to choose four colors that kind of go together in a bit of a gradient or a series. So for example, this yellow, orange, red, and brown here in my Red Heart Hugo version. These are the almond, rust, plum, candy, and latte colorways of Red Heart Hugo. And for my worsted weight version, I am going to use Lily Sugar and Cream in yellow and Lily Sugar and Cream in coral rose. Sugar and Cream in this country red and then Lily Sugar and Cream in the wine colorway. So I'm going to substitute these four colors here for these co four colors here. So these will be our contrast color seven 
and you need 264 yards or 242 meters of bulky weight yarn or 201 yards or 184 meters if you're doing worsted weight and divide your contrast color seven into two separate little balls. This is our contrast color six, the orange, same as the orange here in this pattern. So we'll need 396 yards or 363 meters if you're doing the bulky weight version and 285 yards or 261 meters for the worsted weight version. And you'll need to divide your yarn into three small balls here. Now, if you have a skein like this, you don't need to divide that. You can use that as a ball of yarn. You don't have to like rewind it. Um, our contrast color eight, that was kind of this burgundy in the original pattern. You'll need 228 yards or 208 meters for the bulky weight version or 234 yards or 214 meters for the worsted weight version. And you only need one ball of this to work from. Um, you know, you may need to purchase more than one ball because, you know, unless it's more than 234 yards per ball, <laughs> but you'll only need one ball at a time. And then this here was our contrast color five, the brown in the original pattern, the latte colorway. And you'll need 264 yards or 242 meters for the bulky weight version or 296 yards or 271 meters for the worsted weight version. So now we have our first six colors. We still need three more. And the three more that we need are the ones on these kind of side triangles here, these three colors. So for this, I like to choose three colors that are kind of opposite to these on the color spectrum. Um, but there's going to provide a little bit of contrast here and a little bit of contrast here. So for my worsted weight version, I'm going to use Lily Sugar and Cream yarn and kind of the blues and greens here. This is the Sea Breeze colorway, this kind of light teal color. This is the Mod Blue colorway, and this is the teal colorway. So uh, this contrast color four, in the, the previous pattern it was this teal. I'm going a little bit lighter this time because I, I think it would look nice next to this. You have to see if it matches well with contrast color six. So this is our contrast color four. You'll need 264 yards or 242 meters for the bulky weight version or 196 yards or 179 meters for the worsted weight version. And you need two separate small balls of this one, contrast color four. We're gonna be using this mod blue for the contrast color three. Um, that is this stripe right here. It was dark green, the forest colorway of Red Heart Huga. This time I'm gonna make it this color and we're gonna need 264 yards, 242 meters for the bulky weight version or 263 yards or 241 meters for the worsted weight version. And then finally, contrast color one, that's the sage colorway in the uh, bulky weight version, and you would need 396 yards or 363 meters for the bulky weight version, or 330 yards, 302 meters for the worsted weight version. And divide this one up into two small balls. So you need two small balls of all of them, except for three small balls of contrast color one and contrast color six. And then you only need one ball of your contrast color eight. So that's a lot, <laughs> a lot of information right there. So basically when you're choosing colors, start with your lightest color, something that's really gonna pop and bring like visual interest to the center of your diamond and triangle shapes. Then go to the other end of the spectrum and choose a dark color, a dark navy, an indigo, a black, a dark purple, a dark brown, something that's gonna contrast with your lightest color whenever they match here to create these kind of boho x shapes that just look really cool <laughs> then after you have your light and your dark color here for uh, main color and contrast color two then choose the four colors for the center of your diamond that are going to be in between the main color and contrast color two so you can keep those kind of in the same color family like the warm colors um i did warm colors kind of here both in both of my sample blankets uh, i'm just really drawn to that and it kind of whenever you have an ombre or gradient where each shade just deepens a little bit, it kind of creates this like ripple in the pond effect that I really love. Then after you have those, that's your contrast color seven, contrast color six, contrast color eight, and contrast color five. 
I know so the order's a little mixed up because they're named after how they're used in the pattern. So, you know, contrast color one is used right after main color, so that's why this is contrast color one. Um, you know, I maybe should have planned this a different way, but <laughs> that's how it worked out. So after you have those four, for your last three colors, choose something contrasting to these. That's going to create these interesting sides on the blanket here and these triangle shapes. And I like them to kind of go from light to deep, too. I didn't necessarily do that in the Red Heart Hugo blanket because... The, the yarn selection is a little, the color selection is a little bit more limited in that range. And Lily Sugar and Cream, one of the reasons I love it is because it has so many colors. <laughs> Any color you want. There's like over 100 colors. That's amazing. So I hope you have a little fun picking your colors. And next, uh, I'm going to zoom in on this chart page for a minute, just in case you want to screenshot this for the yarn requirements. So let's take a closer look at this for a minute. This is just the chart that shows uh, how much yarn you need if you're using bulky weight of each of the colors, the nine colors here. This shows what how much you'll need if you're using worsted weight. <clears throat> and then little samples of my worsted weight colors. And then these are just the, the names of the colors that I used for the, the bulky weight version back here. Plus you will need about 300 yards or 270 meters more yarn of whichever color you want to use for the border. And this does include enough yarn to make uh, the tassels. Um, so you don't need to buy extra for the tassels. All right, let's get started. And I'll show you how I like to set up for color work and work the first few rows. Okay, now for a color work blanket like this, I'll show you how I like to do what I call the two basket system here. <laughs> so you don't have to have baskets, you can use um, I've used cardboard boxes, I've used baking pans and mixing bowls, really anything you've got. I, I got this one at the thrift store, just a flat tray, and then this one was my mom's and I really love it. It's a great little basket, I use it a lot, you may have seen it in other YouTube videos, <laughs> um, and I just treasure that. So when you're preparing your yarn by rolling it into small balls here, you need two small balls of each color except for three balls of your main color and contrast color six. And then you only need one ball of your contrast color eight. So I like to keep this basket for all the little balls that I'm not using at the moment. I like to use this tray. Whenever I add a color to the project, I add that ball of yarn to the tray. Um, and I like to keep them lined up in the order that they're used in the row. And then as we start crocheting, I'll show you the balls stay here and when you turn your work after the end of each row, the first time you turn it, you turn it right side over to the left. The next time you turn it, you turn it right side back to left side over to the right. So we're gonna alternate the way we're turning our work so that the work is gonna, you know, all the balls of yarn are gonna be lined up here and along our row is gonna be lined up. Then we turn our work and the yarns are gonna cross for a minute. It's gonna get a little chaotic. <laughs> But then when we turn our work back, all the balls of yarn are, are lined up right again. Um, and another key is to cut, cut the yarn whenever you're done with that section of color and done with that ball of yarn. Pull that out of this tray and put it back into your tray of yarn that you're not using. So those are just some tips to prevent tangles. <laughs> so let's get started. I'll show you how I actually crochet this and how the balls are going to end up lining up over here. Now, whatever tray or box I have, kind of my working yarns, and I do like to push that a little bit away from me. Sometimes I put it on the floor, I'll put it next to me on the couch, but it helps to have a little bit of distance, a little bit of slack between the balls of yarn. So we're gonna start with our main color yarn, and the stitch is C2C, corner to corner, and we're using double crochet stitches in US terms. So we start, we're gonna leave long tails anytime we join a yarn or anytime we cut off a yarn because the tails we are gonna use to uh, join these squares together. So let me actually zoom back out and show you this square here. Well, maybe I'll just stay like, yeah, show you the square we're making. So we're making, we're gonna make six of these rectangle shapes here and join them all together. So it is a corner to corner rectangle. It's almost a square, but not quite. And you can see all of our seven colors here. I mean, our nine colors. 
and um, you see these long tails here. Whenever we join the next rectangle together, we are going to use these tails to sew back and forth to join the, the two rectangles. So when we're making a seam, we're gonna use this one to sew up this little bit of seam. We're gonna use this tail to sew up this little bit of seam. Use this tail to sew up this little bit of seam and so on. So it makes a really clean scene. I'll show you how to do that at the end there uh, of this video. But if we look closely at the corner to corner stitch, each of these little blocks is composed of a chain three and then three double crochet stitches. So uh, let me see if I can find a good one here. So the chain three is here and we have one, two, three double crochet stitches. So we're just building blocks upon blocks. We're working in diagonal rows. Here, we're, we're starting over here at row one, and here's row two, and then row three, row four, row five, working back and forth, and we're going to carry the yarns so that we're really only going to have one yarn tail at the start of a color and one yarn tail at the end of a color. So in some cases, that's only like, uh, you know, I guess we've got two tails on this side, two tails on that side. So... These tails will do a little double duty in joining the, the rectangles together. Okay, the first step is to put a slip knot on our hook and we're gonna leave a long tail. And then we're going to chain six. So just yarn over the hook and pull through six times. Now we're gonna double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then the rest of the chains across. So one, two, three, four. We're gonna double crochet into this chain here and a double crochet stitch in US terms. You yarn over the hook, insert the hook into that chain, yarn over and pull through the chain, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. So that's a double crochet stitch. And we're also gonna double crochet into these next two chains. So there's row one. We've created our first C2C block here. It's basically four double crochet stitches if you count our three chains that we skipped as our first double crochet stitch. So now we're gonna turn our work and start row two. Row two will also start with a chain six. And I like to pinch the third chain. Now we're gonna double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. And if you pinch the third chain, it's the one you pinched. Like that, just that little trick saves me a lot of time on C2C from counting chains. Okay, then we're also gonna double crochet into the next two chains here. Okay, now we've got our first block of row two and we're gonna join it to row one. In your first block for row one, look for that first three chains that you skipped, that chain space. And that's where we're gonna insert our hook to uh, join these two blocks together like that. But we're also gonna change colors during this join. So we're gonna be inserting our hook into that stitch. Then we need to grab our next color. And let's see, that is contrast color one. So grab your little ball of contrast color one. We're gonna leave a long tail and yarn over with contrast color one as we slip stitch these two blocks together. So yarn over the hook, pull it through that chain space. It's kind of the space between the first three chains that we skipped and the first double crochet we made during row one. And then we're gonna pull through that stitch on that block that we just made. Then I'm gonna give the main color a tug back there just to make sure that's tight. And now we're gonna finish row two by creating a block right here in our contrast color one. So we're gonna chain three and then work three double crochets into the same chain space. And as I do that, I'm gonna pull this yarn tail, the yarn we just added, over and I'm gonna crochet around that to really anchor it while I work these double crochet stitches. So chain three, 
and then work three double crochets into the same chain space. And you see how I'm going to crochet around this tail as I'm working these double crochets. Okay, and I forgot to demonstrate the tray here. <laughs> I'm going to put my main color ball into the tray. And I'm going to put my contrast color ball into the tray. And I'm going to leave them kind of lined up right next to each other on that tray. Give them a little slack so that they can roll around. And just keep your yarn organized as you go. That will really prevent yarn from tangling, which is kind of the difficult part about color work. <laughs> Okay, so we created our, our block for row two there. We've got that chain three and then three double crochets and we crocheted over our tail so that now the yarn tail is on the edge of the work here and it's right where we need it whenever we join our two re rectangle pieces together. Okay, now we'll turn our work and start row three. And now when we turn our work, we're gonna turn our work from the left side of the work over to the right like this. And that way our yarns will uncross. Now we'll start row three. We are going to chain six. Pinch that third chain. Now double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the third chain you pinched. And then double crochet into the next two chains. And then we're going to slip stitch to join these two blocks together. Now we'll create another block in our uh, contrast color one here. Chain three. And work three double crochets into the same chain space. Okay, and now we're going to um, slip stitch to this chain three space here. And we're also gonna change colors. We're not gonna use the ivory. So you can just let that hang. Don't cut it off yet, because we can pick it up um, in the next row here. And we are going to add a new color here, our contrast color two. So I'm gonna grab my ball of contrast color two yarn, add it to the tray here. Leave a long tail and yarn over with this new color to connect these two blocks. Give the old color a little tug back here just to tighten that up. And now we're going to create a new block in our contrast color two by chaining three and working three double crochets into this chain space. And work over your yarn tail if you want to. That helps bring it over to where we'll need it later. So three double crochets. So that's row three done. We have two blocks of contrast color one and one block of contrast color two. And if you see a long stitch like this popping up right at the slip stitch, just give it a little tug to uh, tighten that down. Now we're gonna turn our work, and since we're alternating which ways we're turning, this time we're gonna take the right side of the work and flip it over to the left, like that. Our yarns are still in the row here in the tray. And we'll start row four. So for row four, our first block is gonna be in contrast color two here, the dark color. And we'll chain six. And double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook. Double crochet into each of the next two chains. And now we've got our first block and we're going to connect it to this next block over here. And we're also going to change colors. <laughs> So now we're gonna pick, uh, we're gonna drop our contrast color two and pick up the main color. And the main color is over here. 
Um, so we're just going to pull it over and it's going to line up right, right along this ivory block here. So it's going to kind of blend in and we're going to pull it over to where we need it. And slip stitch with it. Yarn over and slip stitch. Give the old color a tug. So now we're carrying the ivory yarn over that ivory block and over this black block here. Um, so we're gonna create a new block here by chaining three and working three double crochets into that same chain space. And we're gonna work over that ivory yarn that we carried and crochet around it to hide it. That saves us from having to weave in a lot of ends. And we can keep using our um, keep using our um, contrast color or our main color here whenever we need it. Okay, so we've got one block in contrast color two, one block in main color. Now we need one block in our contrast color one. For me, that's teal, and we just pick that teal back up again, and we're gonna move it up here to where we need it and slip stitch with that color. Give the old color a little tug. Now create the block by chaining three and working three double crochets into this chain space. Okay, now we have one more block to make for um, our row four. And we're gonna change colors here. So we're gonna insert the hook into the chain space and get our new color ready here and this is going to be contrast color three so we grab our ball add it to the tray leave a long tail yarn over with this new color and use that new color to slip stitch those two blocks together, give the old color a little tug. And then we'll create the block here by chaining three and working three double crochets into the same chain space here. And we're also gonna crochet over that yarn tail. Three double crochets. Okay, so that was row four. And you've seen we've carried yarn a little bit here and um, hopefully your row four should look something like this. <laughs> and don't get stressed out by all the yarn in the tray here. You can always take a stop and untangle it if you feel like uh, reversing the order of um, turning your work isn't really working to prevent tangles. Just take your time and untangle it. Honestly, um, sometimes I'll work all night without undoing the tangle and maybe every two nights I'll take the time to really undo a tangle. <laughs> sometimes you can just keep working. So turn your work. We're going to turn our left side over to the right side of the work and we'll start row five. So we're going to work two of these contrast color three blocks in a row here. And the first one we'll start with a chain six. Double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Double crochet into the next two chains. Slip stitch to this next block over. And create another block. Chain three. And work three double crochets into this chain space. Okay, now we need to work a block in our contrast color one. So we're gonna pull that contrast color one up to where we need it and use that to yarn over and slip stitch those two blocks together. Now give the old color a tug at the back and we'll create a new block here, chain three and work three double crochets into that chain space. Okay, now we need a block in our ivory color. 
our main color here. So we'll use that to yarn over and slip stitch these two together. Give the old color a tug at the back and create an ivory block here, chain three, three double crochets into that chain space. Okay, and then our last block for row five, we're gonna use our contrast color two here. So we pull that up to where we need it, yarn over with that to connect the two blocks. Give the old color a little tug, chain three, three double crochets into that same chain space. Okay, so we're there we have row five, two contrast color three, one contrast color one, one main color, one contrast color two. And if you see any kind of long stitches, just give them a little Tighten up, and now we'll turn our work this way this time, and start row six. So row six starts out with two blocks in our contrast color two here. Chain six, double crochet to the fourth chain from the hook, double crochet into the next two chains, There's our first block. Let's slip stitch the next block and create another block in the same color. Chain three, work three double crochets into the same chain space. And now we need to, we're gonna drop the ivory to the back because we're not using that in this row. And we're gonna yarn over with this Contrast color one, slip stitch with that to join these two blocks. Give the old color a little tug. And we'll create a contrast color one block by chaining three and working three double crochets into that same space. We need to create two blocks in our contrast color one. Two, two blocks in this color. My apologies, keep going with that color for one more block. Okay, now we drop that color and we pick up contrast color three and we'll create a contrast color three block. Okay, now when we join this one, we're gonna connect a new color. And this is our contrast color four. So grab your contrast color four ball, add that to the tray here, leave a long tail. Yarn over with this contrast color four and slip stitch those two blocks together. And we'll create a block here and also work over this yarn tail. So chain three, three double crochets into that chain space, working around that yarn tail. Okay, now we're gonna turn our work. Um, that's row six and we'll start row seven. So row seven starts with two blocks in our contrast color four. So we chain six, double crochet into the fourth chain and the next two chains. Slip stitch to the next block and create another block here, chain three three double crochets. OK, 
Okay, now we need one block in this contrast color three color. So we're gonna pull that up to where we need it. Slip stitch blocks together using that new color. Give the old color a tug. Chain three, three double crochets. Okay, now we'll slip stitch over to the next block and change colors and work one block in contrast color one. Okay, now we're gonna work a block in ivory and we're gonna, this is the only kind of Really weird way to bring this yarn over. It's a little different than the others. Pulling this ivory yarn over to where you need it, you're pulling it across two blocks. So you're pulling it across this ivory block and this contrast color one block. Chain three. And when you work these three double crochets, make sure you're working around the contrast color one and around that carried main color. Okay, now one block in our contrast color two. Bring it up to where you need it. Yarn over with that to join the two blocks. Chain three, three double crochets. And now when we join these two blocks here, with a slip stitch, we're gonna add a new color, contrast color five. So grab that ball and add that to the tray and find the end of it. <laughs> and leave a long tail. Oh, if I had scissors, I would just cut this. <laughs> oh, what a time to get a tangle. So we're going to leave a long tail, yarn over with our contrast color five. To slip stitch those two blocks together, give the old color a tug, and bring the yarn tail over so that when we create this last block here, we are going to crochet our three double crochets around the yarn tail. Okay, so that is row seven. And let's turn our work and we'll do one more row together before we I call it a break, take a break for today and <laughs> we'll pick up in part two for the rest of this blanket. So for row eight, we're gonna create one block in our contrast color five. We're going to chain six, double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook, double crochet into the next two chains, and now we're going to slip stitch over to the next block and work one block in contrast color two. So pick up contrast color two, pull it over to where you need it, slip stitch those blocks together, give the old yarn a tug, chain three, and work three double crochets into the same chain space, working over that yarn that we carried over to where we needed it. Okay, now we're gonna work one block in our main color, this Pull it over to where you need it. Slip stitch with it to join those blocks. Chain three and three double crochets into this chain space around that carried yarn. Okay, 
and we'll slip stitch the next block and change colors over to our contrast color one. Give the old yarn a tug, chain three, and three double crochets. Slip stitch to the next block and change colors to our contrast color three. And we're gonna work two blocks in contrast color three. So we chain three, three double crochets. Slip stitch to the next block. Chain three and three double crochets. We'll slip stitch over to the next block and change colors here. And we'll carry our contrast color four up to where we need it. Give the old yarn a tug. Chain three and three double crochets. And we'll connect to this next block and change colors at the same time. And we'll grab our contrast color six. Add that ball of yarn to your tree. Leave a long tail. Yarn over with this new yarn to slip stitch those two blocks together. Chain three. And three double crochets into that chain space working around the yarn tail. Okay, so here's our, our row eight. We do have a lot of pieces of yarn <laughs> hanging off of it right now. Uh, but this is the beginnings of a beautiful blanket. So take your time. Don't let all of the yarns, you know, overwhelm you. If you need to stop and detangle them, you know, you can. Just pick up the ball and kind of follow it along um, and unwind it if need be. And just keep sw switching the way you turn your work from left to right or right to left. And I'll pick up in part two. So <laughs> hopefully you've gotten the hang of adding colors and get, starting the rows here in the C2C stitch. Thank you for watching. See you soon.